Hello everyone, this is John Frausto at TopspinTennis.com. In this video, I'm going to do an analysis on Nicholas Almagro's forehand. I want to thank uh, one of my YouTube subscribers, Paul Mosera, for the recommendation. This, this video is for you, Paul, so thank you. Also, I want to thank my friend Peter in Toronto. He's, um, you know, I've been teaching tennis for a long time, and he's really opened my eyes to how technique changes to according to the circumstances. And case in point is the video on the left, um, Nicholas is actually playing out a point, a live point. So you're going to see that the technique changes uh, due to the circumstances. The video on the right, he's just warming up. It's in the early stages of the warm-up, and the technique is definitely different than the video on the left. And I'll show you some of those differences. Uh, Almagro is about six foot, 190 pounds, so he's he's pretty big fella and uh, very very strong. Um, like a lot of the Spaniards, played soccer growing up. Very strong legs, and uh, so anyway, very accomplished player. And uh, the technique on the forehand is very good. Let's go ahead and show you um, some of the commonalities he has with uh, other professionals and some of the things that truly make the stroke unique. Uh, first of all, let's look at the grip. He's in a, um, a strong semi-western grip, so that base knuckle is on bevel, bevel four, so ideal for spin and top spin. I mean spin and uh, and power. Notice how he's uh, in this position here. He's palm down, so the face is down, which relaxes that rotator cuff. Uh, very important. Let's go ahead and look at the unit turn. So as he starts prepping, the ball's coming in, shoulders start turning, and then the non-hitting hand, this is where it'll release right around 3 o'clock. And notice how he's doing that there. So good preparation here. And let's look at that trophy pose right there where he gets the full load in the legs. So look at the difference here. Look at the loading here in this position. And look at the video on the right, how he's a little bit more upright, right? So big difference there just as far as the warm-up uh, stroke and, this, and the live uh, gameplay stroke. So great, uh, great trophy pose here. Notice how the racket head is up. The non-hitting arm is uh, uh, parallel to the ground, and he's loading on that outside leg with, he's got a good open stance here. Video here, he has an open stance as well. But just look at the differences between the two strokes uh, due to the circumstances. All right, so ideal position, he's loading on that outside leg. Let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the racket drop. One thing, too, I've talked about before is not breaking the plane. And notice how that racket head does stay on the right side of the plane. So, And, and he's doing it in this video as well. So here's the drop. Notice how that racket face is pointing down to the ground, right? You see that? So very good position in both videos. Now he's going to start pulling forward to the ball. Does get a little bit of lag here. Watch that racket head, how it comes to the inside a little bit, and then it'll come out. There's the contact point. So really good contact point, finding that ball out in front. So good position there. Um, notice how his shoulders and hips have squared to the target. So. Um, just signature position uh, here. All right, let's look at the extension here. The, the, he starts pulling up and across. See that? So he goes to the ball. He's going to it. Gives it a good little drive and then pulls up and across. And here's that windshield wiper forehand, right? Notice how he finishes in this video here across his hip. Here he finishes more uh, above the shoulder. But let's show you... Let me show you the difference in the gameplay situation and the warm-up situation. So both videos, he pulls up and across, right? But look at where he finishes here. And we've seen this in other videos. Notice how he catches that racket uh, into the left hand. Notice the video here, how 
he doesn't. The non-hitting hand doesn't do anything other than kind of stay tucked to the side and the racket finishes, you know, right around the elbow or hip. And I've seen that in several situations in the warm-up and then compared to the gameplay situation. Federer does that as well, Dimitrov. So that's pretty, pretty interesting. I don't know if any of you have any uh, comments. Love to hear your thoughts on that. As a teaching pro, uh, and I've worked with thousands of kids, I always would teach them to catch that racket. You know, um, I, I like them doing that. Almost like they're putting this, almost like they're going to put that that racket edge. So this edge here, I like them almost like like a like a gun holster, right? So just put that put that edge right in the holster. I would tell the kids, you know, um, I like that because it gets them to fully rotate and practice their follow through. But in a mat situation, look what happens. It doesn't catch the racket. So interested on your thoughts. I mean, if you're a teaching pro, how do you how do you teach the follow through? Do you teach the kids to or adults to catch that racket, or do you teach them to maybe finish Something like this where Andy Murray would finish like this. And, um, Andy Roddick would finish uh, similar to this gameplay situation. All right, I hope this uh, – oh, hold on, one more thing too before uh, I finish. Look at on the finish how his shoulders are facing that fence. Notice in this finish how his shoulders and hips are facing towards the net. So once again, that's different according to the situation. We're getting a lot more rotation here than – than we would in this video here. All right, I hope this helps. I uh, really appreciate you uh, watching these videos. If you like the video, please hit the like button below. Uh, if you really like the video, please share it with your friends, coaches, players, parents. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you get my latest videos. All right, enjoy your day.